So it is Friday today. We were supposed to be in the water like, I don't know, five days ago. This morning it was going to happen. James jumped out of the bed when he heard the machine go on and he tested the paint whether it's dry already or not. And it's not. It's still wet even though we put it on at four o'clock in the morning yesterday. It's 27 and a half hours of that paint being on there already and it's still not dry. Perfect name for this episode already. What? Thousand and one nights. <laughs> Stories from the yard. Or something like that. Stories yeah. from the boat yard. I like it. Every f time I do anything, I, I f it up. I don't know why. Why is it that it gets up every time. I painted everything the perfect way, dude. Like, why, why me? Why? Why with this boat? Does every thing I do get? I've decided that I'm not gonna let this uh, minor conundrum mess with my head. The paint is going to dry, and right now I talked to the owner, oops, and uh, he's gonna let us stay here until Tuesday, but he's not gonna pay me, uh, charge me anymore, and this is really my fault, so that was super cool of him. George, I really appreciate you. You're an awesome guy. If you guys ever wanna work with someone awesome, he's a good dude. We'll take this opportunity to like really get the boat perfect, there's a couple other projects we needed to do, so. The teak, right? We need to install the teak. We need since to Kurt finish the rudder since Cayman. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, we haven't. I just painted it with two part epoxy, or epoxy paint, which it worked. I think we're gonna have to epoxy copper it because we're running out of paint. <laughs> it's either that or we use that $600 two part cream paint, cream bow with white bottom and cream rudders. Oh to just look really stupid. I'm in better mood now. I think well, I'm just going to make some soup and we're going to chill. The paint was not dry so we waited another 48 hours. Now it's kind of dryish and we're going we're gonna to put Zingar back to water. You might be able to tell we are moving. So the way I understood it is they're going to um, drive us down here, down the ramp until this whole trailer is in the water because they didn't want the machine that's actually pushing the trailer to get wet. They're just gonna wait for the tide to come in and lift us off this thing. I think that's the plan. And I'm so excited to go to Isla de Coco. That's gonna be next Friday. We have to check out and today is Tuesday, so we're getting close to the date. We have to start the whole uh, immigration procedure. I think we should start with that tomorrow by produce one last time. Costa Rica was awesome, food was good, people were incredibly welcoming, but I can't wait to leave. over the water and now we're just gonna wait for the tide to come up that's gonna be around four hours till we will be able to float up here so this is the boat now it's, it's painted white on the bottom looks a little different you can really tell from the front. Check this out. I bet we just gained 10%, maybe maybe 15% of boat speed right there with that bottom job. I don't know if it's worth three grand, but we needed to repair it anyway, so. Now we don't have water leaking in the boat from outside, that's good. There's only two rules, don't fall off and the water stays on the outside of the boat. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. This is, this is a good day. We're scooting, we're doing six and a half knots and probably nine knots of wind, ten knots of wind, which is f***ing awesome. I like having a, a fast, cool, fun to sail boat. It, it would make a big difference if, I, if we were to go to a monohull now, we'd be like, 
it wouldn't even really be fun to sail. It'd just be like what we do to get to, to point B, you know? The only thing we didn't we didn't get done was uh, there's a repair underneath the boat where the where the machine kind of pushed up on some rotten wood that was already wet, rotten. Oh, we got to paint the rudders. But we can just flip those up and paint them anytime. So we got everything done because we had two weeks. Dude, that was so cool. George not to charge us for the second week. He didn't charge us for a whole week. We were in there for 15 days since you've come back. Sacral. It's the distant cousins of the mackerel. I'm super excited. That'll make good sushi. So while Jamie is handling the lines in the back, I'm uh, I'm watching front to make sure we're not gonna hit a log and mess up the new paint job or even worse. Especially now, in the early uh, rainy season, it's dangerous for boats because of all the logs. We almost hit a big one, just now. So Kim hasn't sailed since she got here, and we've been in the yard for 15 days. Check her out now. You happy, Kimmy? So people, good morning from Eradura. Our sail, our first sail yesterday was amazing. And now we're messing with the dinghy again. We have to get ready to check out because tomorrow our visas expire. Eradura at its best though. Very pretty. The throttle seems to be seized. Carburetor is pretty much seized. The I don't have any control via throttle anymore. So we're going to check out of the immigration, try to get the money back for this paint because it didn't dry. Return these to my buddy Neil. Pick up all the rigging stuff from there. This is a lot of stuff we have to do today. But at least the boat's done. The boat's ready to go now. Ready to go to, to a thousand mile journey. I'm very confident in it. That's all that really matters. The rest of it is just fluff. Girls and Garo! And us, we matter. We matter. You and I must make a stand. So before we start the check out, we're gonna meet Neil. Neil was such a cool guy. He has a Jim Brown 25 on a mooring in Herodura, and he messaged us just to see if we needed any local knowledge or help, and to offer a day sail on his boat, Ashuma. We jumped at the chance and made a great friend in the process. Neil owns Kayak Hako and builds his own outrigger canoes. If you're in the Hako area, go visit Kayak Hako and tell him James sent you. Genuinely awesome guy. Thanks for all the help, bud. I don't know him yet. We're gonna meet him in Jaco and we're gonna drive to uh, Sur Pintura is the name, I think. The shop where... The shop where James bought the uh, bottom paint that didn't dry because um, Neil called for him and he found out that the guys in the shop knew the problem already and they believed that we might get some some of the money back, so that'd be awesome because we really need a new outboard as we have seen again today and as we have seen for the last half a year, a year already. It's screwed. Neil came and picked us up and he's been pretty much chauffeuring us around all day to like hardware stores for, for last minute stuff and, and provisioning and stuff. It's just oh, wow. it's super awesome, man. Yeah, he's no, he's super cool, nice footer. guy. And she's a Jim Brown 25, right? Jim Brown 25. It was built in Playa de Coco, Costa Rica, in Guanacaste. 
1979. So what's the story on the name, Neil? Where'd you it's get a shoe? Silently across the water in the local Indian dialect. So for the last sunset of our Costa Rican adventure here in Heredura, we're going up to the top of, uh, what, what is the name of the hotel? Villa Caletas. Neil's taking us up to the top of Villa Caletas. It is super, super pretty up here and the sunsets are unreal. Today's our last day in Costa Rica. We are taking the bus all over hell to try to check out. We need to go to, the, the, the guy wrote us down where to go, but we don't really know where that's at. We've only been to these places once. And I've never been to the captain, <clears throat> but we'll find it. We have all day. We have to check out today. We, we waited until the last minute, <laughs> as usual. But we have money for Isla Cocos and uh, it should be a good day. We have some coffee. We have our bag and uh, some water and love and each other. We have we have each other. What do you think about that? You look yeah. so pretty with the sun in your hair. Um, I hope we find all the stuff, Jamie. We have to go to Punta Arenas and to Caldera and then to Punta Arenas again and then to Caldera again. Well, you know, the immigration oh, wasn't in, really in Punta Arenas. It was kind of yeah, outside of it. Yeah, and the Capitania de Caldera was not really in Caldera, but in Punta Arenas. No, no, Capitania is right next to Sunset Echo Boatyard. I already found that out. So we're going back there. Okay. Yeah, but we have to go to Punta Arenas for something. Something. Mm -hmm. But we, first we have to go to the immigration office. Yeah. Immigration, here we come. So we gotta take one bus. Kimmy's doing work on it. And then, and then go over this crazy land bridge. Two hours waiting for the bus. We're and running we're, out of time and we're running out of coffee. We're out of coffee. So now it's like lunchtime uh, and we have a probably 40 minute bus ride, so. Showdown with the checkout. Sunny here. Sunny. Gracias por la hora. No problem. Gracias por su ayuda. Tienen un buen país, mano. Shabri Sarpe. Hey, hey. Here we come. <laughs> so I completely messed up my whole timeline thing. That was going to be a cool idea, but. Uh, this is what we had to do. We had to go to one bus and then another bus. And then it was two and a half hours on that bus to Punta Arenas. They dropped us off. We went into the immigration station, but they moved to the police station. Then we got told that they wanted to meet at the port captain's office after we went and paid to the bank. The bank took an hour and a half. We were an hour and a half late to the port captain, but we got our Zarpe! That's all that matters. We left the we left the house this morning at 8:30. It's 5:30 now. We're waiting at a bus stop on the side of the road. We don't know if the bus is coming. The guy that that gave us the information for the buses spoke really fast. 